Hello everyone, this is Game Changer here. So we're playing Ark Survival Evolved today. We are on Xbox official servers and as you can see we're on the Aberration map. In this video we're going to show you how to trap a Reaper Queen, how to get impregnated and level up the fetus to plus 75 before safely giving birth and raising your baby Reaper King to juvenile. If you find yourself enjoying the video please think about giving a like and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make our way to the Halls of the Reaper Queen. Now the location of where we usually find Reaper Queens spawning is around 7030. So as you can see, we live in the luminescent swamp area, so we've got quite a distance to cover to get there. So we're using rock drakes uh, to help us on this weird terrain that they've got going on on Aberration. So I'll probably fast forward this a bit because you don't want to see us getting stuck every five seconds trying to fight off seekers and whatnot. So when we get to a place where we know we're getting quite close, uh, which is around now, we decide it's time to get out the Spino because the Spinos will offer a lot better defence than the Rock Drake, so uh, one of us gets a Spino out, the other one stays on the Rock Drake, and the Spino will kill anything that gets in our way. Now I've slowed it down here, because as you can see up on the left there, there's a purple cloud of smoke. That's what the Reaper Queens will look like when they're burrowed. So just to give you an idea of what to look out for when you're in this area. So we get to where we want to build our trap and lo and behold, Reaper Queen spawns behind me. So we decide to take this opportunity to kill this one, get out of the way so we can build our trap, but also when we kill it, we obtain a pheromone gland from it. Uh, well, four pheromone glands. They usually drop about four or five pheromone glands each when you kill them. And that's gonna be quite important later for dealing with the Baby Reaper King. This ends up being quite a long fight, so I'll probably skip to the end of it, so uh, you don't have to see it all. So she's dead, and we notice there's a little baggie on the floor. So I hop off the drake and access it and four pheromone glands are inside so we're happy and we're ready to now go on and finally build our trap. For the trap we're using quite a simple design. We've got 14 foundations, three dino gates and one stone behemoth with a gateway in it. So we're actually using fence foundations as well just to help get the correct snap points for our dino gates because they can be a bit finicky on official servers. Uh, if you'd like me to do a more detailed guide on how to build this trap just let me know in the comments and we'll, we'll get onto that for you. So yeah we've got the dino gates down and now it's time for the behemoth. It can be a bit annoying to try and line up the behemoth correctly so we've decided to get on the spino and you can get a better view that way of where it's going to be placed. There we are, behemoth down. Just get the doorway into it and we're ready to go and find the reaper. Okay, we found our reaper queen. And she seems to be glitched onto a rock with a load of creatures aggroed to her at the moment. So we've just got to get rid of those creatures, get her aggroed onto us, and then get her baited towards the trap. So it takes a bit of time because uh, it, it, she seems to want to go on the side of the doors. She wants to go around the back of the trap. So I'll fast forward this and then uh, slow it down again once we've got her, you know, where we need her.
Okay, so she's finally in a position where I can bait her into the trap. So I jump out the other side, my partner jumps off his rock drake and shuts the door behind her. And finally, we've got her where we need her. I should also mention the reason that we use foundations here, uh, as opposed to just putting the dino gates and the behemoth directly on the floor, is because the Reaper Queens can burrow underground and we don't want to get her below 2000 health to where she is able to impregnate us and then her burrow. So by having the foundations down it just prevents her from being able to do that. So now it's time to put the rock drake away, get out a spino and start damaging her. We need to get her down to below 2000 health. So my partner will damage her with the spino while I go around following her and trying to get to a safe place where I can check her health with a magnifying glass because the magnifying glass will tell you well the health, the torpidity of the creature that you're trying to tame or damage so as he's doing this I'm trying to get to an angle where I can actually get close enough to magnify her without her knocking me back constantly we've got our glow pets on because because if we didn't have our glow pets on, we wouldn't be able to damage her properly. Uh, you can see that glow around her. That means that she is being affected by the charge light of our glow pets. And so we're able to deal the damage. Uh, if you didn't have a glow pet, the damage you would do, she would just gain the health back straight away. So you would end up doing hardly any damage at all. So always bring a glow pet. Okay, she's down to under 2000 health. So we back off. And now's the exciting part. So I go towards her with my shield up. We're using Mastercraft uh, flak shields. And she does her attacks at me. You can see she's got like a red hue around her now. I've turned my light pet off for this um, because, um, well, we want her to impregnate us. So I just keep going towards her with my shield up. Uh, she'll do her attacks. She did try to get me then, I think, to impregnate me, but the angle was wrong with the trap, so I continue as I was. Uh, she keeps knocking me back, she will do that. And then for some reason she uh, decides to de-aggro from me, so I punch her a few times to try and get her back aggroed on me. Uh, nothing. So I'm just basically going back and forth, trying to get her attention, as you can see. And eventually, I decide to go around the front of the trap where her head is. And then when I come back, well, I'll let you see what happens. Yeah, yes. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. So I back away carefully with my shield up because I'm now pregnant with a reaper <laughs> and we were very excited from this as you can see it's really exciting when this happens now we're going to use this reaper queen to actually impregnate both of us so it's my partner's turn so he moves anything from his inventory that isn't essential onto his spino uh, so he can get himself ready so he turns off his light pet because he wants to make sure he can still see that pheromone aura around her, which is the aura you need to see in order to know she's going to be able to impregnate you. So he heads to his rock drake, grabs his shields. She can break your shields, so we have brought a few shields with us as backup. And in he goes. So shield up and ready. And she's attacking him. Now there is a point where you'll see she tries to sniff him and tries to pick him up. But once again, I'm not sure if uh, she was able to through the trap or if it was the, the angle he was at. There we go, you see? That's the attack you're looking for, where she will pick you up. And she seems to de-aggro once again after she's tried and failed. So he goes in and punches her. 
try and get her aggro back, but then he realises he's forgotten the med bruise. So he has to come pick the med bruise up, because you need the medical bruise for after she has impregnated you, you'll end up with broken bones, so as you back away, you want to heal up slightly. So med bruise in hand, he heads back in for another try. So we're both pregnant and really excited and you can see in the bottom right hand corner there's a timer counting down from six hours. Now that would, that's the pregnant, usually be 12 hours but at the moment on official servers we're on two times so six hour pregnancy for us. It's really important that you get out of the radiation zone with your hazard gear intact because if one piece of your armour breaks at all then the baby will take radiation damage and die so you need to bring some extra hazards just in case usually so we managed to get out just fine uh, we are now at three hours on our pregnancy timer we've been doing a couple of bits we've been making a birthing chamber and one of us has been leveling the fetus up so now it's my turn to level up the fetus as you can see in the bottom corner there we've got plus four just above the pregnancy timer that means I've got plus four levels on the baby so far. So we need to get that to plus 75, which is the maximum levels you can have. So because we got impregnated by a level 110, we should be able to get that fetus to pop at 185. So not too bad. So we just need to get them levels on. We're going to use a Spino for the leveling up. So we're going to take the Rock Drake up to the Fertile Lands and then throw out the Spino and use that from there because the Spino, yeah, our Spinos are pretty much will take on anything in Aberration. In case you're curious, the Spinos we use on Aberration, uh, they started out at 15k health and 1k melee. They're unimprinted and we've leveled them to around 25k health and 1.6k melee. So they're pretty decent and they do the job quite nicely as you'll see. I'll probably cut out a lot of the levelling process because even on 2 times XP it still takes a lot of time to get those levels. So um, I'll just leave enough in for you to be able to get the idea. It's mainly the Spinos that we want to take out because they give the largest amount of XP we've found with this. So we'll take out anything else along the way but the Spinos are key to levelling up fast as you can really. So you basically just want to run up and down this river constantly until you get your plus 75 levels, which as you can see, we've managed to do here. So now we want to get back to base and uh, get ready for the birth. So we're safely back at base. Both of our fetuses have plus 75 levels on them now. 
and I think we'll give you a quick tour of our birthing chamber. So it's not much to look at from the outside, just pretty much a big metal box. We've got double doors at the front and then inside we have a few more extra layers of doors because the reaper babies once they're born can get quite violent we don't want them harming our other creatures. So this is my chamber here. We've got a fenced off area with a glow pet inside because we don't want nameless coming out of the ground and attacking us so hopefully that should fend them off. Uh, another door here and then another door and this is my partner's birthing chamber. Again the fenced off area inside here so that uh, the glow pet can guard us from nameless. So yeah that's our birthing chamber all ready to go and there's not too long left now before the birth so I will come back to you once we're ready. Okay, we're back and there's only a few minutes left before the birth. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to encumber myself with raw meat. I want to get about 400 weights worth of raw meat on my inventory. And the reason for this is we want the we want to die in the birthing chamber and have the reaper baby eat our corpse because he will harvest all the meat from our body and take it on his own inventory. So that just saves us having to constantly go in and hand feed little bits of meat because, as you're probably aware, the reaper babies are very aggro and in order for them to not aggro to you, you need to take a pheromone gland. And we don't want to have to take a pheromone gland every time we go in to check on it and to feed it meat. So this amount of meat should safely take it to juvenile and we should only have to take a pheromone gland and check on it once in a while just to make sure that everything's okay. I'm going to try something a bit different this time. I'm going to kill myself by eating spoiled meat after having given birth and I want to see if he will harvest my corpse even though he wasn't the one that actually killed me. So we'll see how that goes. So here we are in the birthing chamber and not long left so I'll toggle orbit camera. You can see I'm very pregnant at this point and uh, I'll be quiet so you can watch the birth. Well, that was pleasant. So we've given birth, we've got a baby reaper. So I'm gonna go and claim it and then I'm gonna eat my spoiled meat and kill myself and then when we respawn, we'll come and check and see if he's actually harvested it or not. Okay, so there's my body. Let's check. So he hasn't harvested it. So that means that he needs to be the one to kill me in order for him to take my meat onto his inventory. So I'm going to eat some spoiled meat just to get my health down a little bit to make it a bit easier for him to kill me while he knocks about and just hits me every now and again trying to kill me. They are vicious little buggers. And as you can see, as a baby, they look really strange. They're like some weird larvae kind of thing. They haven't quite taken the form of the proper Reaper King yet. So a couple more hits and I think uh, I should be dead. Oh, broken bone. So why he's not attacking me now, I don't know. Just have to stay close and hope for the best. There we go. Okay, so he's killed me. Upon respawning, I go to the vault and get myself a pheromone gland so that I can interact with him without him attacking me. So let's go and check on him. Hopefully he's harvested my body and I won't need to feed him now at all and he should get to juvenile with no problem. Okay, let's check. Yep, he's eaten all the meat from my body and should now have it on himself. 
So I'm going to take my pheromone gland and he will instantly de-aggro to me. He wear friends now and he's got all the meat on his inventory. So I am so pleased that worked. That will save us a lot of hassle during his baby process. All right, let's take this opportunity to have a closer look at this little fella. He is proper weird. You can hear my partner there, opening and closing doors in the background. He's preparing for his birth now as well, you see, because he was slightly after me. But look at this little guy. I don't know if I'd call it cute, but it's my baby, so I love him. <laughs> So now we're going to do some maths. So on the meat, we have worked out that it takes 40 seconds before it will eat one meat. So it's around 26 minutes per stack of meat. And that doesn't include the spoilage time. So the baby has a minimum of 80 stacks of meat on it. So we times that 80 by 26 which is the amount of minutes it's taking per stack and then we divide that by 60 for 60 minutes and we get 34.6 hours so that is how long this meat will last on this baby so we are like I said before on two times at the moment on official servers so it will take him just under four hours to get to juvenile to where he can actually feed from a trough. So this amount of meat on him will easily take him to food trough, even on one times actually on official rates. And this is with spoilage taken into account. So really handy to do this. And while I'm working out all of this math, I didn't realize that my pheromone gland is slowly counting down the timer on that. And uh, yeah, he attacks me. Anyway, so uh, just remember that when you've got your pheromone gland on, the effect only lasts a certain amount of time. Um, so if you want to go and visit your baby reaper again, you'll need to take another one. Uh, otherwise, he'll just keep attacking you. Now we have my partner's turn. He's heading into the birthing chamber. He has unequipped all of his gear, so he's completely naked and he's encumbered himself with meat and he's about ready to give birth to his baby reaper timer's counting down and there it goes he's got his own baby reaper now so he claims it and lets it go to work There we go. So after respawning, he grabs a pheromone gland and this time he's going to take his pheromone gland before he goes in to see the reaper baby because we know now that it's harvested his body and it should have all the meat from his body on its own inventory. So let's have a look. And there it is. I should probably mention here as well that the effect of the pheromone gland only works on your own personal reaper that you've birthed. So for example, my partner tried to check on my reaper that I had given birth to while he had the effect of the pheromone gland active and my baby reaper still attacked him. So only works on your own baby reaper. Okay, so there's his baby reaper. He is made up, quick cheer now. And we will come back to you when they have reached their juvenile stage. Okay, we're back and it's been about four hours. So we know our Reaper Kings are now going to be juvenile. We've taken the time while we were waiting to decorate the base a bit, paint it up a little bit, just make it look a bit nicer. And we're gonna go and check on them. So they should be taking the form of an actual Reaper now, as opposed to that weird larvae worm thing that we had before. Here we are. Looking good, 
juvenile reaper king still got loads of meat on him so as you see you could leave this on single times when there isn't a, a two times event happening on official and it would still be absolutely fine so that's one of them now we go and check on the other guy if you can get the door open here we are and we've got another juvenile reaper juvenile reaper king again loads of meat on him so one thing left to do we're going to cryo them up we're going to get them back to our main server so we can raise them to adulthood using tech troughs because that'll be a lot easier than using a standard trough so that's that and i think i'll bring you back when they are fully grown and have reached adult okay here they are our reaper babies are all grown up and are now adults we're quite pleased with how they turned out. We quite like the colours on them as well. So we're going to have a look now at their stats. So my partner did no imprint whatsoever on his Reaper King. And they came out, as we said, 185 uh, because they were 110s. And then we got the 75 extra levels from levelling whilst we were pregnant. So his came out with 13,000 health. 1,600 stamina and 249 melee damage. I managed to get 75% imprint on mine and it took the health up to 19,000, took the stamina up to 17.7 thousand and the melee to 319. And I also got a bit of extra movement speed. So as opposed to 100, I got 115. So really good really good idea to imprint them and uh that's that so i hope you enjoyed this video please uh subscribe if you haven't already and maybe think about giving a like on the video and stay tuned for our next one thank you very much